And now let's look at the first learning outcome, which is to describe the role of ATP and the reducing equivalents such as NADH. So why do we need ATP? Because ATP is the energy currency for cells. And it is a universal currency because ATP is used across different types of organisms. And the process by which energy is produced is known as the catabolic reaction, which refers to a breakdown process. So we need energy for a number of reasons, such as muscle contraction that allows movement, active transport of molecules and ions across plasma membrane, biosynthesis of macromolecules like proteins and fats, cellular processes such as DNA replication, adaptive thermogenesis or the generation of body heat by the warm-blooded animals. These activities are all fueled by the ADP molecules and therefore we are all chemotrophs because we obtain energy from the chemical reactions, specifically from the catabolic breakdown of food molecules. And now try to answer this question. The chemical reaction by which we produce energy from food is known as what? Well, the answer is A, oxidation. At the chemical level, we derive energy from food via oxidation, which is equivalent to the loss of electrons by the food molecule. But why do we need electrons? Because it is from the flow of electrons, we derive energy to make an ATP molecule by this process known as substrate level phosphorylation which involves a direct addition of phosphate group to an ADP forming an ATP molecule. However, most of the ATPs are produced by a second method which is known as the oxidative phosphorylation or better known as the electron transport chain or ETC. So in this process, you have the conversion of the NADH and FADH2 into the ATP molecule. So again, these are the two ways by which our cells can make ATP. One is by the direct addition of a phosphate group into ADP, forming an ATP that is known as substrate level phosphorylation, while a second method is involving a structure known as the electron transport chain that is found inside the mitochondria of your cells. Okay, showing here you have the outline of ATP production. We ingest high energy food molecules such as fats, carbohydrates and proteins and convert them into low energy products like carbon dioxide and water molecule. So this process is known as oxidation. And the whole purpose of oxidation is to break the covalent bonds within the macromolecules. Now remember, covalent bonds that link these subunits together are formed by the sharing of electrons. So by breaking these covalent bonds, we are releasing the high energy electrons from the food molecule so that this energy can later be captured by either NADH and FADH2 and subsequently be released to make more ATP molecules. So showing here are two examples of food sources with a lot of electrons. You have pizza with extra cheese and a root beer float. So they have a lot of electrons stored in the form of covalent bonds. They are found in the long fatty acid chains and the sugar molecules. And we can then use those energy to produce many more ATPs. Imagine now you have one ATP produced from the high energy electrons, but how do you release the energy from the ATP to drive other biological activities? Well, to, in order to do that, we will need the help from a water molecule because we will need water to hydrolyze the ATP molecule for the production of energy. So when the delta G or when the change of free energy is negative, it means energy is being released. So this reaction is known to be exergonic and it is a spontaneous reaction. Why is it so? Because if you look at the structure of the ATP, it has three phosphate groups. And to be more accurate, you will see some negative charges on these molecules, which means you have a strong repulsion forces in between these phosphate groups. So ATP, has a high tendency to donate its phosphate group. And by doing that, energy will be released from the breaking of the covalent bond. And with that, you'll be having ADP and a phosphate group as the reaction product.
okay, by now you should appreciate the fact that ATP is the universal energy currency for the cell. But it is not the only energy carrier molecule in the cell because you do have other variants such as GTP that is used for protein metabolism, CTP that is used in lipid biosynthesis, and UTP that is used in carbohydrate metabolism. But ATP is the US dollar within our cells and it is still the top currency used in our body.